Hi guys, this is TabletNews.com and I'm here with yet another Romanian tablet. Previously we've shown you reviews of devices from the brands Evolio and Allview. This is the third Romanian brand tablet that we're reviewing. It's the Iboda and the model is the Iboda Supreme IPS Dual Core X200. This is a dual core tablet with a 9.7 inch display and the price tag is, in case you're wondering, $312. We're dealing with a solid design here and this model is battling with the Allview Oldro 3 Speed Duo and the Evolio Aria, two other tablets you saw in our reviews. We got a big number of ports available right here and this tablet has appeared on the local market in Eastern Europe towards the end of 2012. It has some common problems just like the X80 model that we reviewed here about a week ago and by common problems I mean the ones that they share with random resets and the battery indicating showing a bogus charging level. Ok so that's about it when it comes to the biography of the tablet, now let's get to the design. If you ask me it's exactly the same design of the Jarvik GoTab Zeta and also of the Allview Oldro 3 Speed, it's got a solid metal back that you can see right here. It's got big bezels around the screen, you can see them right here. And now I'm going to show you all the ports and slots that as usual for Romanian tablets are focused on one side of the device. We got the on off button right here, next to it the charging port and then there's the mini HDMI port, there's the host micro USB, micro SD card slot and the other micro USB port and audio jack right here. We got a small reset hole here, this is the back camera, speakers here and finally some buttons, multifunctional menu and volume buttons and an escape button. So that's about everything you need to know as far as ports are concerned and um, aside from the back camera we also got a tiny little front camera available right here. If you want size, well the tablet measures 11.7 millimeters in thickness and weighs 600 grams. So. It's relatively light for such a big tablet with a 9.7 inch display, but it's also pretty thick. Ok, moving on and getting to the hardware area. This model comes with 8GB of flash storage, but there's also a bundled memory card of 8GB, so you actually get 16GB for the price of $312. Other features include the display, it's a 9.7 inch IPS screen with a resolution of 1024 over 768 pixels. This is a multi-touch 10 point screen with a density of 132 ppi and inside we've got a rock chip CPU. It's actually rock chip 3066, it's a dual core 1.5 gigahertz Cortex A9 processor so it's actually a pretty good tablet if you look at the specs and the price and the GPU is a Mali quad core 400 megahertz there's also one gig of DDR3 RAM, Wi-Fi there's no Bluetooth and no GPS remember that and if you want to know details about the cams so this is a 2 megapixel camera at the back and up front 0 0.3 megapixels right here for the video capture the camera will do a 640 over 480 capture video a train 10 frames per second and finally the battery inside this device well this is a 3.7 volt 8000 milliampere hour battery good enough for 5 hours of gaming so let me show you I have uh, some screenshots saved right here if I can find the gallery with this theme applied so here we are after 4 hours and 57 minutes of pure gaming, I have been playing uh, World at Arms by Gameloft for 5 hours straight and the battery lasted that long with a brightness of 50%, Wi-Fi on and a problem with the tablet is that it charges a very very long while. It will take you a long couple of hours to charge the tablet, even let's say, I don't know, 3 hours or 4 hours to charge the tablet to 100% battery, which kind of sucks. Also the battery indicator will show you 100%, then 70%, then 35%, then 70 again. So it has some problems with actually regulating the proper level of the battery. Ok, so now it's time to test the audio quality and for that I'm going to access YouTube, search for some tunes and blast them to the speakers of the device to see how it handles some dubstep. Let's keep a bit ahead. So 
So the speakers are available right here. These are the speakers. Okay, so you get the idea of it. Now let's draw the conclusions. The bass is very good, the volume is okay. One would say that it's loud, but having heard the Allview tablets, I know that it can go even louder. There are a bunch of headphones bundled with the device, and their jack is heavy to fit into the port of the tablet. Plus, uh, I don't like the way you're, you can listen to music on them, because uh, there's a slight uh, lack of bass, lack of high notes. So the headphones are crappy, you better listen to these good speakers, actually quite good speakers. Okay, time to watch a movie trailer and judge the video quality. Uh, apparently there's a new movie coming up, a new animation movie, something like, I don't know, Disney or DreamWorks, one of the two. It's called Epic and it's got some snow patrol in it, so we're gonna go to mute since we know uh, record uh, disc makers are crazy about copyright. So now you can watch the trailer for the movie Epic and judge the video quality of the device. As you can see the colors are very vivid and uh, the viewing angles are pretty good. Not mind-blowing but pretty good. And aside from the colors and the viewing angles we got a decent brightness but it's uh, below what I've seen from Evolio and Allview to other Romanian brands that get some serious brightness on their tablets. Also, there's a slight backlight bleeding. As some people have noticed from our unboxing. It's uh, on the side right here somewhere. So you can spot it if you watch really closely. Sometimes it appears, sometimes it won't. But anyway, I know it's there, the backlight bleeding. Plus, the screen can be glossy, but you have heard about all these problems before. Okay, time to test the camera. So it's merely a 2 megapixel camera, do not expect anything big from it. And here we go, pressing this, entering the menu, here's the globe, taking a pic. Long, long lag, as you just saw. Obviously noise and grain, it's a 2 megapixel camera after all. This is not a pure view camera. Some options, like white balance, available with it options here auto incandescent daylight fluorescent cloudy we also got the scene mode the camera settings like storing the location and then comes the video capture with once again white balance time-lapse interval and storing location plus a panorama option right here of course the camera is mediocre it's a 2 megapixel sensor it has noise and the options you saw earlier. Okay, time to test the benchmarks on this device. For that I'm going to go into the gallery and check a few out. So, we ran the usual uh, setup of benchmarks and I decided to compare this tablet, the Iboda X200, with the Evolio Aria and all U3 Speed Duo, two other Romanian tablets, two other dual core tablets. The pricing is also pretty similar, so all three of them have the exact same pricing of $300 and let's see which one is the best. So, in the first test, in Quadrant, we scored 3790 points, while the Volio Aria scored 3800 points, and the Allview 3 Speed Duo 3200 points. So this one is close to the top. Meanwhile, if you're wondering why there's no Antutu here, well, if you run Antutu on this tablet, it gets stuck, it gets blocked, it freezes, and it may feel like it's blowing up since it starts to overheat. So no Antutu for us here. However, we did perform the Nanomark test and we got stellar benchmarks. In Nanomark 2 we got 57.7 frames per second. We totally beat the Volio Aria and it's 36.5 frames per second. And the Allview 3 Speed Duo and it's 37 frames per second. So, at least the GPU is solid. It's a Mali 400 MP quad core. And then comes the Velamo benchmark where we scored. 1443 points compared to the 1100 of the Evolio Aria and the 1100 of the Allview tablet. So once again, we're on top of them. 
and then comes the browser test this uh, in browser mark we scored 1400 points and sadly uh, those times when we tested the Evolio and Olvio tablet the browser mark was version 1.0 but I can, can compare this score to the ones here so Nexus 7 can score up to 4000 points and we scored 1400 so we're 50% dumber if I can say that compared to that tablet finally in Sun Spider we scored 1900 points and in this benchmark the lower the better just for an example the iPhone 5 scores 900 points so we're almost three times slower than the iPhone 5 when it comes to web browsing so that was the benchmarking folks okay now other stuff we're mentioning for this tablet let's start with the operating system so we're dealing with ice cream sandwich here obviously and uh, we're running Android 4.0.4 on this tablet time to show you the web browsing experience on the device although in the benchmark we scored a pretty low score if you ask me well let's check out the browser for ourselves so this is the virtual keyboard by the way pretty comfy and let's access tablet news see how fast it loads and how fast we can scroll around zoom around pinch to zoom and how much of the screen we can see so tabletnews.com loading via Wi-Fi on the tablet here we go some scrolling some pinch to zoom and finally the ported experience decent web browsing but not anything impressive of course inferior to the iPad for example or to the Nexus 10 for that matter but still it's $300 it's a cheap tablet it's a dual core tablet and it has ice cream sandwich as the OS so there's no project pattern to make it run faster and I'm going to enter the settings area here we go show you some interesting settings we have some HDMI settings you can set up the HDMI resolution or the screen zoom which is a pretty cool thing to set up for some reason there's also an Ethernet setting I find that interesting and uh, other than that the Android experience is pretty much the same as it has always been with the multitasking done like this with a bunch of widgets that uh, were supposed to be here but I have installed a launcher so they're not you can actually add folders in that well in case you're wondering this launcher is Go Launcher HD the reason to install it was simply the fact that the tablet was very slow and very annoying when I first got it for testing and I found the launcher to be absolutely necessary to handle the device so you got your running apps right here you can press this button to kill all the processes a lot of customization you can start uh, doing changes to the lock screen let's see what you can also draw a gesture and remember it for later as a command some special preferences and settings for this theme like app drawer settings gesture settings backup and restore about go launcher hd i recommend that you try this go launcher it's a pretty cool uh, application and it's a pretty cool way to customize your device and here are the windows of the launcher okay so as i said without the launcher it's all laggy but with the launcher everything is okay among the problems of this tablet, the problems that I had with the Iboda X200 the overheating in this area right here and the battery indicator that would just go crazy sometimes and now it's time to show you some of the applications that the maker of the tablet has decided to bundle with it obviously I had to download most of the major Google applications I had to download uh, Gmail for example so this is Gmail and moving up I had to download YouTube that you already saw in action um, there's no point in showing Google Maps since there's no GPS on the tablet we have bundled the one mobile market and the one mobile game this one is a clear Play Store clone but it's an alternative place to get your apps as you can see it has some lag right now and it's a clear as I said copy of the Play Store aside from one mobile market and one mobile game what we have bundled here um, of course we got Play Store here it is the Google Play Store when you also saw Gmail and uh, you can also socialize if you want via Twitter so here's Twitter this is how you can see Twitter on this big 9.7 inch screen bunch of tweets right here you can also see it like this 
Of course, you probably wouldn't want to use this app on a tablet. It's not very comfy on a big 10 inch screen. And I kept mentioning some bundled applications. Well, let's see one mobile market. We've installed the Antutu benchmark that didn't work. We also have an APK installer. This one is used to install application. We got your usual calculator. And then we got a calendar. And here it is, the calendar. And the uh, search clock, email, flash player settings. So not much bundled with the standard uh, applications on the tablet. So that's about it. That's about everything you need to know about this device. Of course, there's also a bundled store, yet another store, aside from the Google Play Store and the One Mobile Market. We got this one that's called Slide Me Market. Its interface is old, it feels even older than Symbian, if I can say that. And if you want to download extra apps from it, you're welcome. Okay, times for the pros and cons related to the Iboda X200 tablet. The pros, well, we got the solid design, we got the OK battery. I can say that 5 hours of gaming on a $300 tablet is not that bad. We got those good viewing angles when playing stuff on YouTube. Um, we got two micro USB ports. So as you can see one is a host, one, one is a regular micro USB. Also got good benchmarks and good audio quality on the slate. So these are the positive aspects of the tablet. As far as the negative aspects go, well, there is a lot of stuff to mention here. So as I mentioned before, there are problems with the overheating of the tablet. And also the battery indicator can go crazy sometimes. Even now we started the review with 99%. Remember that the review started with 99% and we're at 59% for no reason actually. I find it hard to believe that in about 20 minutes of review you can lose 40% of the battery. So once again battery indicator problems, random resets, washed out colors of the display, um, backlight bleeding, a little bit of backlight bleeding, some lag before installing this life saving launcher and uh, the poor headphones and the fact that we have the same design as the Airvik GoTab Zeta and the AllView AllDraw 3 Speed. So for design we give it an 8 since it's a solid tablet after all. For the hardware we give it a 6 and we're pretty harsh here because of the resets and the battery. And for the operating system and user interface we give it an 8 as well. It's Android after all and with the launcher it works just fine. So overall it's 7.33 out of 10 for this tablet, the Iboda X200 dual core. 9.7 inch model. This is tablenews.com and bye bye.